Talks. And again, we're with Graham this week, and we're going to talk about leadership. Um, in, in our studies of sport as a business, um, we talk about management and we talk about administration, but at the end, as one of the management functions is to lead, um, having the leadership skills and being a leader, something that sometimes we see so naturally within teams is absolutely key um, to actually de deliver a good service or product in our sporting industry. We need strong leaders to drive new ideas, to drive um, successful events. Um, for example, always think of um, the ASB Classic, the tennis um, open that we have here in Auckland. Unfortunately, we've been suspended for the last couple of years, but the leader of that, um, Michael Bur uh, Budge, um, he was tremendous, 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 tremendous leader in, in terms of bringing um, really good tennis players to Auckland before going to the Australian Open and bringing on great sponsors and great uh, services to create an event that was an event in itself. Um, as, a, as a sporting event. So leadership is tremendously important. But again, welcoming, welcoming you on, uh, Graham. Um, we, all have, we all have different um, ways of viewing and thinking of what is leadership, don't we? Oh, definitely. And um, they all have their different uh, outcomes uh, from, from what I've experienced. Um, Whenever I think of leadership, I, I always think to my days just playing uh, football and, and having uh, different coaches and their different styles. Because um, essentially, you know, that's a, they're, they're demonstrating uh, the, the different leadership styles. Um, and some coaches I have uh, loved playing for and others I have um, less than enjoyed uh, playing for. And it has... Uh, not necessarily been the greatest experience and um, uh, I've actually swapped teams because of um, some, you know, having a, a really poor coach with a really poor leadership style. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, I think this is a really important topic uh, for us within this uh, sports management space to have because of the outcomes um, that, that it can uh, result in and, and how I think in your, your previous chat, you, you know, you spoke about the importance of understanding that uh, sports management is very much uh, involves working with people. And so we need to be able to um, understand our own leadership styles, understand um, how we like to do things, reflect on that. And I think that starts maybe with just uh, understanding uh, what the different leadership styles are and um, I, I understand there's, a, there's a, a, a couple of different classifications or, um, yep. with definitions of leadership styles. So, um, Fran, could you maybe you know, let us know some of the different styles? Absolutely. And, and before we get started on that, I think a key message is that this is done academically. In, in theory, we've divided up leadership in different leadership styles. Uh, I strongly recommend to use your coaching background in terms of how your human relations are with other people and strengthen that. Your human relations with other people and how you conduct that will probably fit along two or three different leadership styles. You're not necessarily one leadership style. You could be a little bit of, of, of a, a couple or two or three. This is just an academic exercise, but it's good to know so we know the traits that are behind leadership. Um, um, a big thing about leadership is if you're going to be a leader, you need to have followers. And if you have followers, what do you do as a leader? You move your followers from A to B. So saying that, the first thing as a leader, you need to be really, really clear where you're heading where you're trying to move people. Uh, probably the most negative example I can find, but it's a really good one, is Donald Trump. When on the 6th of January, a lot of people went to the US Capitol and entered the US Capitol, that was 
because there was very good leadership in terms of the definition of moving people from A to B. From somehow through his charismatic leadership, that's his style, charismatic leadership, he got people that were following him and he was able to move them from A to B. From any part of the United States, they went to Washington and they entered the US Capitol. It's not a positive example, but it's a very clear example of effective leadership. A charismatic leader is able to have a strong following and is able to move his followers from A to B. Another classic business, business example, and this one probably a little bit more positive, is Steve Jobs and Apple. Steve Jobs and Apple created a product with a certain design, which was the iPods and then the iPhone, et cetera, that he moved people to actually go and spend a lot of money on these products and use them and make them a way of life. Today, we don't question why we use these things. But there was a leader there, right? That challenged us to use these devices in a new way. A transformational leader. He moved us. We right. So off, we got off our seats and we went into the stores and bought this. People make, make lines when a new iPhone is launched overnight to buy the new iPhone. Probably not happening as much now, but over the past 10 years, we've seen that happen. Right. So that that was like if we think of you know, MP3 players existed for quite a while before the, the iPod came around, but when it did, it just exploded. And that was a big part of, of how it was presented and, and the, obviously what it sounds like the leadership um, displayed. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the leadership displayed to produce a product like that, that actually moved people. So and I, I'm mm -hmm. using that example because I want to really emphasize that a leader has followers and is able to move his followers from A to B, right? Right, and, and so it's the style and the approach of how you achieve that that we're yes. kind of looking at today. Exactly, so for example, right. um, we have one of the styles is, could be called a coaching style. That co a coach is usually motivational for a coach that you really, you were talking about it, that you really engage with, you're able to do anything. You're able to actually play so hard that you can come off injured or vomiting because you're exhausted, right? But you've done it all because your coach is strongly motivational and you'll do it. So that's a coaching style, right? That's a, it's a, it's a leadership style through, that is highly um, related to being strongly motivational. Um, one of the coaching styles, oh, sorry, one of the leadership styles that I really like is, and we've talked about this in a, in a previous um, class talks, is a visionary uh, leadership style, a leader that actually sets a vision really clearly, right? Okay, so would that be someone like Elon Musk with SpaceX? Yes. Absolutely. The one I like to use because the words that he used were very visionary is a man that brought a million people to Washington, D.C. before there was actually social media. And he said, while he had a, a million people that came to hear him speak, he said, I have a dream. And he described that dream. And that dream was where all Americans could sit at a table, could go into the same restaurant, et cetera. And that man was Martin Luther King, undoubtable leader, but his leadership was about, though he was also very charismatic in his, in his, in his persona, but he set a clear vision. And that I have a dream speech at Washington DC is where he set his vision. And yeah, that, that was really powerful leadership because it's echoed. Yeah. yeah, 
just yeah throughout and it's been 60 years and we still talk about it mm. and we talk about it internationally when this was only when this was an american civil rights issue so with regards to sports uh, you you have leaders of organizations that say you know what i want to bring this team to this city Recently, um, in Auckland, we have some visionaries, leaders that have brought baseball, professional baseball to Auckland. And their leadership and management has been so strong that they've been able to knock a quarter of North Harbor Stadium down to transform it into a baseball stadium. They have contacted American baseball teams so that they can bring um, what we would call here second division professional baseball players to play in what is the winter league here in our summer. For that, it's visionary because we don't really even know about baseball in New Zealand. Yeah. That's visionary yeah, leadership. To actually, this visionary leadership to actually be able to sell that image, you know, to show that image and get people to fall behind it. Visionary leadership. Yeah, because that 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 stadium stadium has has long been rugby uh, football. Yeah. So to to be able to drive such a change and deliver on it is, is incredible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Visionary leadership. Uh, I I really like it. Mm. I really like it because when there's a vision, uh, that's one of the greatest forces of motivation. You know, if you you've set a purpose that actually you push to to achieve. The, a third a leadership style could be servant leadership. And we love that word here in New Zealand. Uh, we love about that, keep it humble, servant leadership, humble, protective, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't want too much attention, but through my actions, you know, uh, we're, we're doing the right thing and we're, we're leading the way. We do that quite well here in New Zealand, servant leadership, that you are giving back to the group, right? You're protecting the group. You're part of the group. That's the, the a servant leadership style. Um, one that we were very used to in the in the 70s, especially because of the whole political turmoil that we had around the world. Um, and coaches, for example, took that on as well. The autocratic leadership style. It's my way or the highway. I know how to do things here. Right. Right. <laughs> autocratic yeah. this is the result that we're after and this is how we do it if you want to be on my winning team you follow what i do no other ways about it um, right. there's it, it, no space for questions ideas yeah usually usually autocratic leaders when they are good they also have a very powerful vision um, and, and they have, and they carry a bit of success with them. So that allows the followership to follow and fit into the mold of that autocratic leadership, but. Right. So it's almost buying into the success. Exactly. I want to be under that umbrella. I want to be under right. that umbrella, you know, but in the 2020s that we're in now, um, the way that our social constructs have shifted. I think um, with the greater inclusion that we're driving in our, in our societies, autocratic leadership is really on the out or, or at least has lost force. And it's all because of this inclusive uh, diversity uh, culture that we have brought in in the 2020s, which is not a bad thing, but we need to be mindful of how socially we are constructing our societies in which we live in. And that also gives a little bit more preference to one leadership style over the other. So that, that's really interesting um, as a student, understanding that uh, management as a subject is, is actually dynamic, that it changes and evolves through time, um, through what's going on um, within our social space. And probably what what that's saying to me is that while i'm starting my journey now and i'm i'm learning all about the fundamentals now um i 
when I graduate, it doesn't mean my learning stops there. It's Absolutely. a continual process. Absolutely. And, and my recommendation to students is, it's the same as Mintzberg, the experience that you have in your different organizations, whether good or bad, uh, they'll be a big part of the learning of how you end up being uh, as a sports manager. They'll be a big part of uh, that experience. You'll, 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 you need to be critical of, I want to take this on. I don't want to take this other thing on. What am I learning about it? What will have the better results? Also with my own personality. And maybe I'm a control freak. And if I'm a control freak, I wouldn't be able to be a hands-off leader. There are leaders that are hands-off, that are extremely trustworthy, that they set the vision, they set what needs to be done, and they leave you to it. And maybe my personality, I'm a control freak. I still need to know if everybody's beating what they need to be, what they need to be met. You know, I'm not going to be satisfied. I'm not going to be comfortable with that. But there are leaders that really leave it because they've set a strong vision. They, they have a strong trust in relationships that they leave it a lot to a hands-off leadership. Uh, it's something that we see, we're seeing more and more um, I, I, through my previous research in, in rugby, where there are trusting relationships between coaches and players and the player group. And, they have in, and the coaches have empowered a leadership group within the players that the leadership of the coaches is a bit more hands-off. For example, there's no necessarily, a, there's not necessarily a talk before the game because it's hands off. The players already know what to do, right? Right, and so the, and I think in the, in the media, we've heard um, that the All Blacks have a, a leadership, like a player leadership group. Yeah. So is that, that's sort of potentially an example but without it knowing exactly what's going on. Exactly. You know, just so, hearing so that there. Yeah, from the management perspective, the coaches know what's going on. They know what they want to achieve. There's planning, there's organization in place. But from the leadership point of view and the way that they're exercising their leadership, they're le leaving it in the hands of the player leadership. So that empowers the player, empowers the individuals to make their own decisions and to be accountable for those decisions. Right, and we can see that's had some some really good success, absolutely some incredible success over the years, right? A absolutely, uh, and, and you you have your systems, right? That the players are playing to, but they're accountable to that. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike in football, where you have the coach that's screaming on the side of the field, for example, that we we're so used to because it's actually it's part of the show. It's part of the of the show that football delivers is that screaming coach that he's commenting everything that's happening, every touch of the ball that's happening on the field, that would not be hands-off leadership from the football coach, right? And because uh, we've, we've just had the NFL, um, the, the sort of interaction between quarterback and coach, because you see him talking a lot, looking at playbooks, um, yeah. is that sort of a similar, um, where the, the coach is empowering the quarterback? And yeah, that, 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 I, I would say sometimes the NFL, um, that could fit into a pace setter that's a helpful, motivational coach that, um, that's, that has a leadership style that's helping the quarterback, but it's also a very bureaucratic leadership style where basically there's a hierarchy and the quarterback needs to come, come back and confer with the coach on the decisions that they're doing on each play. Um, so yeah, depending on the coach, um, sometimes those quarterbacks don't have a lot of leeway in regards to what they're doing next. It's actually the coach playing with his pawns on the field. You know, and that's where the coach is really important rather than the quarterback in the, in, in the NFL. So- Right, um, so, so that was a little bit like what you're talking about right in the beginning in that it's not necessarily one leadership style only, it's actually, in some cases, it's going to be a blend of those different styles. Exactly, exactly. And and you might you might hear from one of the quarterbacks is that um, it's he or my coach is really supportive and he's really innovative because he's come up with all these systems and absolutely, and um, and that actually is a definition of a democratic leadership because 
many times a coach that actually in the planning stage is actually conferring with players to what's going to be the best solution and the best thing that they're using as a team. Um, he's actually letting go of that control and getting the opinion, just like we do in a democratic system that we go out and get the vote of the electors, you know, and then that, and then the, the leader actually frames it and puts it back to the team. Cool. All right. All right. So, so I guess in that summary there, we've, we've got a number of different leadership styles. Um, they have, they sit within a definition with, with specific traits that we can see. Um, we need to be mindful that um, it's not only a single, it often not only going to be a single leadership style, but can be made up of a number of different styles. Um, and that leadership evolves over time. And with our learning that we're not, it's not just what we're learning in course, it's something that's going to evolve. And so we need to keep up with our learning over that. Um, over our career within sports management. Exactly. And, and it's something also really important to, to highlight is that a leader is not a leader because they're a manager. A leader is a leader because he's able to move people from A to B. He has followers and he's able to move them from A to B. If he happens also to be, also to be a manager or to carry a title with them, it might make the job a bit easier. But you don't necessarily have to have a title or be a manager to be a leader. And that's, that's really, really important. What I want to leave before we, we um, close off this uh, class talks, um, Graham, the question I want to leave is, what would be your three favorite leadership styles? Or what two or three leadership styles do you identify with? And what leadership skills come with those styles? So two questions there which is your favorite leadership styles, two or three, or what leadership styles you relate to, and what skills come with that leadership style. All right, what personal skills come with that leadership style? So we'll leave you with that question. Um, and I hope you enjoy this topic of leadership. We have some tremendous leaders in New Zealand. Um, so go look them up. Um, and carry on this conversation so you can form your own type of leadership moving forward.